Hey everyone, I'm Jake, the Dungeon Master for Venture Ventures, Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus. This is episode 32. We're we're making our way through this infernal adventure, and I mean that in a myriad of ways. Uh, before we I recap, I'd like to go around the table and everyone tell me what their characters took because they just leveled to level 10. I was a little behind on the leveling. Then there was a little TPK or something, and uh, you know things get backed up. So uh, let's start with Dave and your character. What did you take, or what did you get at level ten? Um, I got commune with nature. I get to cast Ooh. it as a ritual. So cool. So it could fun. be pretty fun to use. So I'm able Ross. to oh, since sorry. I'm uh, a uh, bear totem essentially like a a spirit of a bear can come to me and give me all sorts of information on the surrounding areas as long as it's not too like man-made yeah um if it's a cave it you know shortens the distance of uh, the radius of information but do you only have one totem? Nature, bear totem you only have one or do you get yeah. a second one at a later level yeah there's a second one but i picked bear for that also Oh, okay. Double bear. Fair. Yeah. All right. Well, Ross. one is one is oh, the sorry. totem and one is the aspect of the beast, I think. So you can choose the same same one. Okay. Roz. I got divine intervention, so I can call to my deity and ask for aid. Mm -hmm. um, it's a real low chance. You have to roll a percentage and get below your character's cleric level. So, other than 10%. that, got a few spell slots. Yeah, got a ten percent chance. Cool. And if you if successful, you can only use it again like seven days later. So, not something you're using. Much. Yep. Uh, Brian, same thing. I got the same thing as as Horton. Cool. And Gary, your uh, new character, <laughs> the same, <laughs> but just differently named. Yeah, so Draco took a cantrip of Minor Illusion, a 5th level spell Immolation, and he got a feature. He got a third um, a third meta magic, meta magic, and he took the extended spell to extend his spells. Nice. That's the distance, or is it time That's as well? That's the time. Okay. Cool. All right, well, let me do a quick recap and we'll get back to it. So previously, the, this group of characters uh, had experienced a TPK, uh, not this group, but uh, they started with a new group of characters and woke up in the furnace of the former arch devil, Bell, uh, having brought them back to life. Um, they were... were given some options not in particularly good negotiating position being raised from the dead by an arch devil he, he put a contract in front of them uh they signed and uh he wanted them to prove themselves to him and also had some fire giants in the forge forging things and creating weapons for the blood war and offered the fire giants freedom if they killed any of the characters. Uh, a fight ensued and a lot of damage was dealt. One character went down and the fire giants fighting for their freedom were particularly brutal, killing one of the characters but eventually all four fire giants were, uh, were downed and Bell set them up with a barge to take them to find nine adamantine rods. Uh, and they're being led by an imp named Balacros. And we left off at the barge with you being met by Krinjak, the barge captain. 
is going to take you along the river Styx to where the Sibriex, this demonic hoarder of knowledge, is located. And the barge is cru crewed by 12 Maragons on oars. Um, and that's where you guys are right now. Uh, as you begin the journey, is there anything you'd like to do around the barge? Or I can... I'm good. Share it. Just watch. Okay. So, uh, so as you travel down the river Styx, you approach to what is familiar, what would be familiar to you as players, not your characters necessarily. You approach the Stygian docks, which you had previously, with previous characters, tried to lie your way through, and it didn't work out. It's very imposing. Uh, as it's connected to two large cliffs uh, around the river. And there is a large warship in the shape of a dagger, a vertical dagger, seemingly refueling from the river below, pulling souls in from river sticks. And you pass it without incident. You are on a sanctioned barge by a very powerful devil, so there's no issues. Uh, and a little while later, you are moored on the side of the river, and Crinjack says to your group, this is as close as I can take you. Balacros can lead you to the Sibriex on foot. Uh, you don't have cars for us or something? I hate walking so much. Yeah, that's rough. <laughs> Nothing to it. Hum -bum. Good luck. And I march off the boat. Um, Bing is... We were just uh, brought back to life and all. Any chance we can get some soul coins to uh, make our way around? <laughs> uh... I don't have soul coins for you. Okay. But good luck. Thanks. That's the best I can do. Will you be, I don't know, around to take us back if we complete our task? Can we use you to get back across the river? If I'm around, I got other stuff to do. All right. Like what? Oh, you know, devil things. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah and uh he signals to the 12 maragons and they push off and you guys are left there with a tiny little flying imp ba balacros who's going to lead you to the sibriex and you uh if you want to pull up the map i can show you in the general location okay Let me know when you got it up. I yeah. got it. I got it up. Okay. Uh, from the bottom center of the map, go about... You see those balloon things with tentacles? Yeah, the flying brains? Sure. Yes. Uh, you're, you're around there. Uh, and as you approach the area... You see spike, spiky change lash a 15-foot diameter floating blob of quiver, quivering flesh to a 20-foot tall wrought iron scaffold. Two fiends wrapped in chains stand atop the scaffold, torturing the bloated creature's flesh by tightening its chains. Demon ichor oozes from its wounds, forming a shallow pool around the scaffolding. scaffolding. A third jackal-headed fiend... Uh, would be familiar to you guys as uh, one of the fiends who helped TPK pre your previous group. Uh, Jackal-headed fiend uses a bronze horn to yell loudly at the bloated prisoner in multiple languages. It sits cross-legged about halfway up the scaffolding. And uh, Balacros says to you guys, well, good luck. I am not going to get any closer 
In fact, I will uh, be hiding, but I'll be around if and when you come back. Which one's Serbiax? Uh, the oh, Serbiax, the, the gross one, isn't it, Balakros? Yep. Yep. Uh, you can't miss it. Uh, do you know why he's uh, currently all chained up? Oh, well, he's a demon. And those are devils. And you're working for a devil. Well, that's handy. All right. <clears throat> and you hear the jackal-headed figure yelling things at the creature like, who do you work for? Uh, usually prefacing the question with insults. Uh, not really hard to come up with as this is a quivering blob of pustules and nasty. Uh, asking who you work for, tell me about any plots to overthrow um, Zeriel, just naming Archdevil's Bell, uh, Mephistopheles. Uh, it's asking just a bunch of different things. Is that a uh, cat's character? What? <laughs> I don't, I don't. The third one. It sounded yeah, like yeah. Mr. Mistopheles. Yeah. Oh. Um, and uh, as you approach, uh, what's your marching order? I'm, I'm flying. I'm forward in the front. I'll come up behind him. I'm very big. I'm mm -hmm. very short. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm flying. I can up. take up the rear either. Either way, it doesn't. As long yeah, as it doesn't Mr. matter to Squishy me. Squishy here oh. isn't in the okay. front or back. All right, so uh, Draco middle, Horton first, and then I'm flying in the back. Jazzy oh. first. Jet, Jazzy. Uh, <laughs> wait, isn't your name Horton? No, I'm no. Horton. Fuck. Draco. Um, no. The other player. I, Mine says it. Man's got to stop dying. It's harder to remember your. <laughs> character names mine says it on the zoom call yeah i just missed that horton <laughs> uh jazzy and brian's doesn't have his it just says brian so it's all and date yeah it's just you're the yeah. only one who did it uh there we go uh sir jazzy leading when you get within 120 feet you hear in your head a gargling voice telepathically communicating to you saying I can help you free me free me I uh, you guys hear that it's just jazzy oh never mind I trump it back um to get the attention of the jackal headed thing how high are they again 20 feet up 20 feet up so yeah I trumpet at it yeah, and uh, you interrupt the jackal-headed one mid-question and seems to get really annoyed from the interrupting trumpeting. Uh, just squints at you guys and puts its hands up. A business from Bell. That one, we need it. and waves you a bit closer and uh when you get closer uh the jackal-headed one says i too am on business from bell and i need it it doesn't gonna... it doesn't have to go anywhere i'm gonna insight, well insight that uh, check that he you, yeah you want to you want to insight the jackal head that bell one. sent him there to yeah. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Okay. Roll the nat one. <laughs> mm, seems legit. My uh, passive insight is 18. Uh -huh. So. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, you think? <laughs> Pretty legit. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I, I approach closer. Is there a way up the spire? Obviously. Eh, doesn't matter. I click my heels together and fly up there. There you go. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> to do that. 
How um, heavy is how heavy is how heavy is Horton? Well, no, it's not the first one. I have no idea. Dense. He's dense and wearing heavy plates. Yeah, full plate. Full plate. I'm a dense boy. I probably weigh a good <laughs> two hundred something pounds. Probably can't pick you up. I don't know. I'm an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> a strong one at that. <laughs> a very strong elephant. Hey, I take Horton with me. <laughs> okay. Uh, you, and your your boots can carry how much? It does not specify one way or another. I, I imagine it's restricted by what my character can carry. Yeah, probably your carrying weight. Uh, we'll just say it's fine for now. But my gauntlets will make me very, very strong too. Also that. Um, we'll just say you're you're hugging him like a uh, like a carry. I don't know what what are those carrying things that people carry babies on the front of them with? They're like front backpacks, whatever those are called. Baby <laughs> sure you're just like holding them like this as you float up and uh the whole way up i'm not struggling bjorn but i'm like put me down you piece of shit i don't like i hate it when people <laughs> pick me up God damn it. <laughs> i already care you know hush those are called bjorns right baby bjorn sure. i remember yeah baby bjorn the brand uh and uh yeah you fly up to the Arcanaloth and still annoyed and is just like, well, uh, as you can see here, I'm trying to get information out of it too. So uh, yes, it's more uh, important. how long will Please that take? One moment. What what'd you say? How long are you gonna be interrogating this creature? No, uh, Jazzy, what did you say? I'm, I missed the oh. last part. Oh, I said I just brush them aside and say, no, no, we're more important and approach the Cypriax. How close do you get? Um, I want to get check a range thing. Oh, I mean, I, I don't get closer than, say, 15 feet away. Okay. Feet. How large is the top of this spire thing? Um, I guess that matters. You mean the scaffold? Scaffold, yeah. Uh, well, it's on the outskirts, like around the Cibriex. Um, It's probably like forty feet away from the Cibriex. Oh, when you get within now, I gotcha. When you get within thirty feet of yep. the Cibriex, yeah. Um, I definitely get within thirty feet. Okay. Uh, make a Constitution saving throw. Should I also, since he's carrying me? Oh yeah, uh, because you guys get hit with a. Aura of, well, the stat block says contamination, but uh, that seems not descriptive enough for the level of filth and infernal pus and decaying flesh that hits you. Uh, what did you get, Jazzy? Bad. I got seven. That would yeah, be that'd, that'd be me as well, since I was flying up there with him, right? If you, oh. yeah. Natural 20 plus 7? <laughs> Hell yeah. I got a 17. Okay. The, uh, the the elephant and the baby Bjorn dwarf uh, failed. Wow. 17 fails? God damn. Ouch. Yeah. Don't drop me. You get, you get sick, Draco. Uh, like, oh, no, extremely not... sick, but Wait. you push it down. If I had a natural 20, how did oh. I get sick? I'm describing I'm describing oh. you making the safe. Got it. I was like, what? Uh <laughs> it's messed up. Sorry, I was like, oh, I was offended for a second. Okay. Yeah, my bad. Know. Um and you two who failed take 17 poison damage. Oh. And uh, what do you do? Do you stay I'm resistant I... to poison damage? To nice. I throw up a little bit on Horton. Yep. <laughs> God, I mm. Ooh, I swear, if you don't put me down, <laughs> I put I'm... him down as I back up. Okay, back up and out of the thirty foot range. You feel that horrible feeling. <laughs> Stop. You hear uh, laughing and the clanking of chains as the two chain devils 
flanking on, on two different scaffolding are laughing at you guys. Um, and the Cybriex once again contacts you, Jazzy, and says, if you free me, I can tell you whatever you wish. Um, I'm going to first cast Enhance Ability on myself as I trumpet back at it, at him and uh, cast Bear's Endurance on myself. Okay. <clears throat> and then, so one second, let me mark that off. And then I um, approach him again, willingly. So I imagine then, I have to roll again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, if you're still carrying Horton... I'm not carrying him. I put him down. Okay. I put him down and I backed up and then he also put him down. Oh, I get one sec. I also get 2d6 temporary HP. Nice. Bears endurance. So that's nine. I might need that. So I wanted to be sure to get that first. And I have advantage on my constitution. Actually, is a constitution checks i read that poorly that might not have been the right spell to cast <clears throat> failed again all right but i'm not going to go back i continue walking forward as i spit up more okay um so that's 16 poison damage okay and the cybriex says do you work for Bell? Um, I'm going to slap him in the face with my trunk, cast Zone of Truth as I do, and okay. uh, say, I ask the questions here. Where's the adamantium? Okay. Uh, make a, a persuasion check. Okay. And what's the save? He needs to make a charisma save okay. versus 16. Oh, my persuasion is not very good. No, that's probably not going to do it. A 14. Uh, okay, noted. Uh, wow. These are solid saving throws. Uh, <laughs> so there's a 19 save on the on the zone right. of truth. Uh, and a failed save. It doesn't fail completely. Oh no, he saved. He did save. Never mind. Yeah, it does fail completely. Never mind. I will tell you whatever you want if you free me from these disgusting devils. Tell me first, and I'll decide if the information's worth it. <clears throat> you don't. Um, there's a long pause, and I need you to make another Constitution saving throw. Yep. Yep. Ooh, much. Nope, that I can't read. That's still pretty bad. That's 15. Okay, well, fail. <laughs> I thought it was an 18 rolled, but it's just a hard to read die. 18 poison damage. Uh, what are the other three of you doing as you see? <laughs> uh, just sitting here watching. I'm like, he's. He seems to be doing this of his own free will. Who am I to stop the man? He's he's retching and dry heaving. Yeah, well, he picked me up and threw up on me, so I'm in. And there's vomit uh, coming out of his his trunk, like it's a rough. fire hose. Sucks to be him. <laughs> Sucks to be him. What did he eat before he was raised from the dead? My lord. I just don't go near that thing. Trust me. It's not good. Uh, and uh, the Cybriex uh, telepathically communicates with you, Horton, and says, free me and I will tell you anything you wish. Betray your master. I don't think that's going to happen. But uh, you give me some information and I will do the best I can for you. It really depends your, on what you got. Your insight is um, passively 18? Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, you you think the Cibriex uh, is in the context of the situation, you are in hell, you're talking to a demon, hmm. pretty good chance you're being lied to. Yeah. Um, and uh, Tell him we can go tit for tat with uh, you give me info, I'll help you out, but you're not getting anything before I get something. Tell me what you're looking for specifically. I am looking for how many of them? Nine. Nine adamantium rods. Mm, yes, I know where those are. <laughs> uh, make a persuasion check on your tit for tat uh, information. I run out of the stink after he stops talking to me. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> you said persuasion? Yes. It's a negative one. It's still a 16. Not bad. Hmm. Pretty good. Uh, the Cibriex says to you, um, there is a wrecked flying fortress that contains your adamantine rods. That's all the information I will give you unless you free me. That was telepathically? Yeah, just to Horton. And you're still, the uh, Fletch Chatter, the Arcanoloth, is still using its horn and yelling things at the Cibriax. <laughs> I'm going to look at the, the jackal head and yeah. be like, hey, does he ever talk to you? Sometimes to yell at us and curse at us. Oh, okay. Just curious. He... He's talking in my head. It's freaking me out, man. Yeah, he does that. Yeah. What did he? That. What did he say to you? Uh, are you near me? Did you fly? Yeah, I, I came. I came back when I started getting sick, and I saw Sir Jazzy puke. Shabby is still on the ground, so I'm just like, well, you're down there. Uh, I like wave Jazzy over. I'm okay. And then out of the cloud and i'm also gonna cast cure wounds on myself at third yep. level yep yep, yep. Uh, i'll tell him that uh he says that there's a wrecked flying fortress that contains our adamantine rods but he won't tell me anymore unless i help him out well that has to be a, a noteworthy thing uh hey you the jackal headed one uh do you know of a wrecked flying fortress around here <laughs> Wrecked Flying Fortress. There's a few flying fortresses. Did you get any other information about specific flying fortresses? This one is wrecked. That's, that's all I got. Uh, are, are there any currently no longer flying fortresses that used to be a flying fortress? Like it is now a ground fortress because it fell. You guys are really cramping my style here, interrupting me and my friends from our interrogation. I I, I don't want to be here at all. So the faster we can get this over with, the better. I, I apologize for the interruption. Balacros, the imp who was previously invisible appears about 15 feet behind you guys and says, hey, hey, get over here. It's just a flying fortress. Is that what you said? I don't yeah. want to get closer. Yeah, okay, I come over. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. I think I know where it is. Oh, super convenient, thank you very much. Is it close? Uh, it, Distance is relative in hell. Okay. Changes. Sure. Can you oh, take us there? Leave this thing. I'm I'm on board. I I feel better, but I still don't feel very good. Uh, the Cibriex telepathically talks to you, Draco, next, and says, "I can offer you information of great." that will lead to great wealth and power if you just free me 
from these chains. Draco. Oh, he said it to me. Sorry, what did he say? I was fixing something on the audio. Uh, he's he says uh, I Cybriax basically says the same thing that he said to everyone else. Uh, I can offer you information, great wealth. Uh, if you free me, help me out and free me from these chains. Are right, he's twenty feet away from us at this point? No, more. Oh, like he's 40, more than... 45. How close was I able to get before I started getting sick? Thirty feet. Uh, okay, for the sake of this cast, I need to get exactly 30 feet. Um, I'm going to go exactly 30 feet, just far enough to cast, and I'm going to cast Charm Person on him. Okay, make a constitution saving throw. Crap. Uh, nine. Uh, all right. Let me double check something real quick. Oh, you're good. Uh, charm person, what save is that? Wisdom, 13. Terrible. Only if this were a person. Oh. Oh, good call. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Good call. Oh. Uh automatically was just going to charm monster um yeah uh you don't you don't have to mark it off i'm not i'm gonna say you would have no uh, it's it's an item that i picked and i'm actually really bummed i picked that in being in hell and i did not think about that at all that's a bummer yeah oh you were using your eyes of charming or whatever mm -hmm. i okay. didn't think about it when i picked i was charming that person is not equate to everything else that is here I mean, you could charm your your group mates. Yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> okay, might have to sell uh, that later. <laughs> you just die again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's definitely possible. Why not three times in a month? By roller coaster standards, <laughs> you can probably get a hundred arrows for it at least. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah. Uh. Okay. So, um, that doesn't work, and as you guys are going away, well, I'm gonna, what, what's up? I don't, I guess I don't realize that it doesn't work, so after that I'm going to try to convince him, now that he's talking to me, I'm going to, um, uh, Horton told us what he asked him, so I'm gonna ask him, uh, where the wrecked ship is, with, I'm gonna try to persuade him to tell me where the wrecked ship is, thinking he's my friend now. Roll a persuasion check. 18. 18. I told your friend that it's in a wrecked ship. You're not getting more information unless you help me out of my binds. I'm not going to help you until you give us something to go after. That's... I just did. How do I know you're telling me the truth? There could be wrecked ships anywhere. Um... Uh, it says... You're useless. And I'm and... going to... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I'm going to also cast message to talk to one of the other uh the other guys are devils that are with us right that are around yeah that are torturing it yeah. cool uh he might be able to give us the information what if we can trick him and think he's being freed by us and can get the information we need out of him and then not let him out of our sight you're free to try so you're saying you want to use illusory magic? Yeah. Um, mm, illusory magic or some way of him just thinking we're... Does, what kind of... Have you encountered him? What, what, what kind of... Uh, 
what does he have any unique skills is he if we took him with us is there anything we have to worry about and we can let him think we freed him from you this demon can warp flesh as it wills it is highly intelligent it is the most disgusting demon I've ever experienced. It is duplicitous. And how are you stopping him from doing anything right now? The chains and experience. Got it. And I turn to my party and I share my party of the plan that I'm kind of thinking about doing and see if they have any ideas how we can keep him contained and let him think he's being freed. Uh, I, I have nothing that would aid in that venture. I thought Bellacross was taking us to the, the one he knows about. Yeah, I would say we go check out this flying fortress that our imp friend here knows where it is, and if that proves to be nothing, we come back here and start beating this thing until it gives us information. Okay. And I cast message back to the devil. Continue your interrogations. We're going to seek out a lead and we may be back. Uh Uh-huh. And resumes screaming at the (laughs) the pus-filled demon. Uh, And you guys head out on your way. Uh, I need yes what I was just going to ask how long have we been traveling roughly between the river and getting walking to this distance 12 Maragons had you moving through the river surprisingly quickly Uh, and it's been about a half day to three quarters of a day Um, just wonder if I'm starting to get tired yet I mean, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Um, as you guys head out, uh, you don't have a infernal war machine, so you'll be going out on foot. I need a group survival check, so I need everyone to make a survival check for me. Well, does any of this rely on smell? No. No. Okay. Uh, 22. 18. Nice. nice. 10. Could be better. 18. Nice. I rounded out that curve a little bit for you guys. You're welcome. <laughs> it was necessary. As you're traveling, you see uh, firestorms in the distance uh, oh. of various types. Um whether it just be great gouts of fire emanating from clouds or uh, spontaneously igniting the air. Uh, Try to avoid it. And you're doing a pretty good job of it. But as you're traveling, a firestorm gets too close for comfort and seems to be following you uh if you thought it if it was a a traditionally intelligent creature you would think it was following you um and uh what do you guys do as it's approaching you have a very short time to do anything you'd like to do i'll cast mage armor on myself uh-huh. I will uh I'm gonna go ahead and bless myself, Horton and Shabby. Okay. Yeah. And it just looks like like is it a constant thing like a fire tornado that's just like following us? Uh yeah. Kind of like, deal. Yeah, it's like sixty feet uh in size. And uh you guys stay grouped up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm 
trying okay. to think if I can do it. Oh, um, go? Ooh, no. I, uh, I, I fly up into the air a little bit. Okay. Off the ground, 20 feet. What it, What are our immediate surroundings look like? Like, what can we see? It's a plain, pretty flat, not much, dusty. I am going to cast gust of wind at it and try to blow it the other direction <laughs> while we walk away. Okay. Um, read me the... How does that spell work? A line of strong wind, 60 feet long and 10 feet wide, blasts from you in the direction you choose for the spell's duration. Each creature that starts its turn in the line must succeed on a strength saving throw or be pushed 15 feet away from you following the direction of the line any creature in the line must spend two feet of movement for every one foot of it it moves okay. uh, the gust disperses gas or vapor and it extinguishes candles torches and similarly unprotected flames in the area uh, it causes protected flames such as those of lantern to dance wildly and has a 50 percent chance to extinguish them you said protected yeah protected has a 50 percent chance but, that, but that says like lanterns and stuff. So this is much bigger than a lantern. I'm just hoping to slow its movement, not extinguish. Yeah, it's uh, it gets affected by it, but it doesn't. It it uh, seems to mold itself around the ten foot wide, uh, and around where your gust of wind is, the fire intensifies. And when it hits you guys, I need all of you to make a dexterity saving throw. And does the bless give you saves? Uh, yes, we, the three people I called out have a D4 that you can add. So roll a D4 of that. Dexterity. Did you call me out? I'm sorry. I was yes. Like, yes. This is going to be real good. So I thought it was going to be a creature coming out of the same, not just a firestorm. A magical but, firestorm. Oh, sweet. Low modifier, but a really good roll. Nice. So a D4 I can add? Yes, roll a d4. 13 Ooh. for me. Okay, that's a fail. 19. Fail. Oh. What was yours, Brian, again? I failed 22. then. <laughs> 22? 22. S success. Um, success, half as much damage. 38 damage to those who failed. Oof. Anything you're wearing is now on fire that is flammable i assume horton doesn't really it's all metal right horton yeah my bag is it magical no it's just okay. a, the explorer's pack yeah it catches fire and i need to roll this uh my con save passed for bless okay uh, as it hits you guys, what do you guys do? You stay packed together, or what do you do? How high is the firestorm in the air? Mm -hmm. I fly over it. Do I think I can fly? Over it? Yeah, you think you could uh, after a few rounds. <laughs> uh, can I fly out of it to the side faster than a few rounds? Sure. Yeah, I mean, if I just like par or perpendicular. Yeah, so yeah, Jazzy, you're getting away from the group. Yeah. Uh, what is everyone else doing? You staying I, bunched up? I also fly out of this firestorm okay. in the direction I'll of Jazzy, ish. Okay, I will go the opposite direction. Okay, Shabby, I will go a third direction. Okay, so you guys are splitting up. Yeah. Uh, the firestorm. Uh oh, my computer wants to restart. Not today, Windows. <laughs> <laughs> what do we tell Windows? <laughs> Man, not today. Not today. Not today. Um, Horton, uh, as you guys start running, the firestorm. You're like, I'm, I'm running my dwarven best. Yeah. And it's following you. It seems to be attached to you. Uh, oh, great. <laughs> uh, the rest of you are out of it easily um, and 
I need you, Horton, to make another deck save. Unless you and you guys have a have a turn to do something or not do something. Um, um I'm gonna turn seeing that it's chasing Horton. I'm going to change direction and follow. Okay. Roll the 17. Oh, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do about this. I'm <laughs> going to cast a fifth level dispel magic on it. Nice. Nice. I am going to cast my new um, community of nature. How long did you ritually cast it? Like 10 minutes? I don't know. Does it have a. Will it actually say in the spell how long it takes to cast? Yes, it will. I shall look that up. Uh, Horton, you take. As you start your turn in the Firestorm, another 34 damage. An eight. Or, yeah, 17 would pass. It says one minute. Okay. You can start casting it. I start casting it. Okay. Can. Um, and your dispel magic. Uh, fifth level. You still need to roll for it, correct? Um, it's DC ten plus the spell's level. It's been a while since I've used this. Uh, yep. It'll tell. Make you. an ability check using your spell casting ability for each spell of fourth level or higher. Yeah, if it's a below third, if the spell is below third, if it's any spell of third level or lower, it ends. If it's fourth level or higher, um, I make an ability check using my spell casting ability. To yeah, go ahead and do that. Except you cast that fifth level, so that pushes that up from third to fifth. If that matters, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, if it's a fifth or below now, it'll auto work. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, yeah, so. Go ahead and. Uh... Ability check using your spell casting ability. Okay. Um, Fourteen plus eight, uh, twenty-two. Yeah, uh, Horton, you take the damage, uh, but the dispel magic works on this infernal firestorm, and it <laughs> goes out. Holy shit! Did it burn my beard off? <laughs> Do you have a magical beard? No. It's now super patchy. Oh, I'm so mad. I'm just like, oh, I got fucking puked on today. My beard is burned it's a off. Rough day. I swear to Thor, this is his place. As the firestorm dissipates, I'm already like beelining it towards uh, Horton, and I swoop in and scoop him up under the elbows or under the shoulders and fly up in the air with him. Uh, a good 30 feet as I cast Cure Wounds on him on third level, but I am carrying you again. Okay. I, just, I swear to miss... Ooh, you elephant. You could... You could resist. Yeah, I don't want to be dropped. Okay. <laughs> I'm very wise. <laughs> very good, good point. <laughs> I'm trying to save you from the fire, uh, but I still get it. I at least touch you, so that's uh, 6, 12... 16 20 points you heal 20 points good nice what's also annoying about being picked up by an elephant is trunk. That the trunk yeah like unless <laughs> unless jazzy is very cognizant nope. of where he's putting it like it'll just be like in yeah and it sure is i imagine it's just like over my head and just... it's everywhere yeah <laughs> have you seen how elephants use their trunk it's yeah i'm being carried <laughs> It's it's he's not even doing it consciously. It's to like subconscious. check your beard, and I'm like, Hort, Hort, your beard. <laughs> I I know, I know. Put me down. Put <laughs> trunk like feeling your face. <laughs> uh, and then seeing the firestorm has dissipated, and we're back to relative safety. I descend and <laughs> place you back on the ground. As you guys group back up, uh, Balacros reappears out of invisibility. And says, what are you guys staying together for? This is, you're insane. You should have split up as soon as that thing was coming for us like I did. Oh, we couldn't see you do that. I also <laughs> oh. third level cure wounds myself as he put me down. Okay. 17. Shabby, you still concentrating on your prayer? 
or your no okay no okay <laughs> um it was for the uh firestorm uh, there, are, there are many firestorms raging around us yeah as i understand it it's a landscape of firestorms yep 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 um but thankfully uh you're closer to the wreck than you might have thought uh and these firestorms you're you're more careful about avoiding them now that you there's some sentience or magnetic attraction to creatures uh you can take your time and uh you, eventually you see a towering wreck rising from the scorched hellscape it looks like a giant sword blade tilted to a 20 degree angle and partly buried underground much of its exposed hull is rusted and torn asunder hot winds scream as it tears through the hollow structure and six giant vultures circle high above it and this this wreck is 150 feet tall but the lower third of it is buried so you estimate that uh, it's the big. top portion is about 80 feet off the ground and Balacros says well this is it <laughs> hey, do you know what those are? I point to the flying creatures uh... Let me look up imp intelligence. Mm. Demons, flying demons. I forget what their n name is. Okay. Second question. Do you know of anywhere like a, a cave or a big rock I could like go to sleep under anywhere around here? Mm hmm. Balakros um, starts looking around. Real tired. Uh, Horton, I yeah, you got burned. Yeah, I just I don't want to have to fight all those flying things right now. I uh, I, I would. I got, I got fried. Yeah, yeah. My my trunk was singed. Must be rough. Oh, well, it'll grow back, buddy. I just like flip. I imagine like full plate armor has like one of those like. Helmets that you could like flip up and down. I'm just like <laughs> shabby. Shabby starts casting one with nature again. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're 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 uh, not so good with expressing yourself with words, uh, but you're very good at expressing yourself with your your plate plate armor yep. face shield. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so a minute passes. Shabby, uh, what, does it, what does it look like when you're communing with nature? Do you like sit cross-legged and hover a foot off the ground, or do you do um, it while doing a handstand? I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a there's a spirit of a bear that comes up to me and just starts talking to me. Yeah, you I guys don't that. see it, but a minute later, I, are you like cross-legged on the ground, or are you just standing there? Um, so what, what I'll, just, I'll just do like do? superhero kneel. Okay. Uh, and a minute later, the you hear some some heavy walking and some animal mm, growls, and you open your eyes, and you see a spirit bear in front of you staring at you. And what is what? Can you ask questions, or how does it work? Yeah, I get to know three facts. So since we're outside uh three miles within, yeah within a three mile radius uh uh i, re I really just want to know if there's a cave or a safe place a safe place to go to to rest there's a cave a quarter mile away it's got a tight entrance that I couldn't fit into if I was in your form, but it will serve for your purposes. 
Got it. If you were the same size as your spirit, but but solid. Yes. Got it. Um, and you know, two more facts. Uh, favorite food and um, are there any other man-made structures nearby that we should know about? My favorite food. Fawn. Mm. Yeah. I ate a fawn named Bambi once. Oh, man. Then I ate its mother. Ah, that's, that's less delightful. That's nature. Mm. And your third question. <laughs> <laughs> your third question. Another man-made structure I do not sense any at this moment. Or demon-made structure. Any any non-natural structures. I do not sense any okay. non-natural structures. All Goodbye. Right. Thank you, and I stand up. Goodbye. Goodbye. See ya. See ya there, Mr. Bear. <laughs> Uh, Very in touch with nature, but still awkward in the social encounters with nature. Uh -huh. uh, uh, yeah, so you have your information. And uh, yeah. As you stand up, uh, I, I, you were talking to the bear, so you didn't notice, but I was like, that's a good idea. And I take the same pose and just pray to Torm that entire time. And when you stand up, I'm like, oh, yes, <clears throat> onwards and upwards. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, not um, asking for a divine intervention, intervention, right? No, no. Okay. Uh, I have normal prey. While, while their backs are all turned and praying, I like look for where Draco is, and I'm just like turned away from him and lift my visor up. I'm just, like, my God, my God, <laughs> my, what have they done? <laughs> Balacros appears out of invisibility and says. Yeah, it looks pretty rough, but I feel like I can already see it growing. Yeah, it's it's going to take me a couple days. I assume dwarven beers grow real fast. Oh, I yeah. Know. Oh, yeah. They're like 9 a.m. shadows. <laughs> <laughs> um, BT Dubs, I, I forgot to mention this. I did cast two sorcerer spells. I don't know if you wanted me to do anything about that. Fuck. Oh, yeah. Um, I forgot. <laughs> well, 20 and let's just <laughs> delay wild magic maybe. yeah yeah it's okay it was not once okay i'll try to remember next time is yep. there crackling for him for anybody yeah your else? mic is pretty oh. rough garbly you sound like a robot minus yeah to me it's just like popping yeah or crackling yeah a how about bit. how about now it's just quieter now. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Did you touch a plug at all? No. Everything's plugged in. Like popping like when you jiggle an audio jack. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Everything's like, unless there's like uh, interference or something. Are you currently, have you been rubbing your sock covered feet on carpet? Yes. So you're just charged full of static electricity. I don't know if that would make a difference, but you turn a, you turn a microwave on next to you at all? No. <laughs> uh, try unplugging your mic and plugging it back in. I've heard you that. Do you do any sound mixing with a auto tuner? <laughs> <laughs> so I tell the group about the cave. Okay. I was going to ask about that. We should do that. Oh, we should definitely do that. And if we're on our way to do that, I'm going to quickly cast uh, Cure Wounds on myself as a precaution. Um, in case yeah. He lives in the Did cave. I... You still have bile in your trunk. You can, oh, yeah. I, I you can smell it. it, out. it I flush it out. You know? Yeah, you, you do. But it's still like you can still, your sense of smell is incredible. So you can still like. Oh, it's there. Yeah. <laughs> It's going to take some time. Yeah, it's going to take at least a few days. All right, so you guys head to the cave, and as described 
by the bear to you, Shabby. It is a crack in the ground facing upwards, uh, and uh, it's difficult to squeeze in, and it slopes downward and levels out after about 50 feet. And yeah, you think it's as described, as advertised by the spectral bear. Cool. Guys, we anything else in, you'd like to do? I get inside. Go night night. Nap time. Long rest time. Okay. My audio improved by the ways at all? Not nope. really. No. Oh, that's cool. Uh are you guys taking watches? Yeah. I think we should. <laughs> um, I'll take first watch. All right. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be like in the crack, looking out. Okay, you're gonna be at the entrance of the cave, looking yeah. up, trying to see out as much as possible. It's difficult since the entrance is. But I keep my trunk up, like uh, smelling style. Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, make a perception check with your trunkness, which means. Advantage. And I have a good modifier. Twenty-three. Nice. You're you you don't uh smell anything other than the rocks that are still circling above. Uh nothing unusual. The the temperature changes and you smell that firestorm smell, uh, but it doesn't get close. Uh, your your watch goes by. Who's second watch? I'll take second. Okay. Hit me with your perception. Twelve. Twelve. Uh, it's very, as I described, it's difficult to see out, and you're not aided by a long trunk. Uh, a snow, never... if you will. Yeah. Nevertheless, your time passes. Who's got third? I'll take third. Shabby, make a perception check. Not one. Uh... <laughs> What's a good way? Uh, four. Four, okay. Yeah, you get distracted uh, maybe by your thoughts. What would Shabby get? distracted by and uh just he's not just, pay attention he just uh he's just grabbing his great axe and he's just like ah oh, god there's like a little bit of it's like it's like some blood stains and little scratches Infernal rust. Yeah. yeah yeah uh your time passes without issue and at the end of your your watch you realize you weren't paying attention at all good thing nothing happened uh and Morning comes, and uh, yeah, you guys, quote unquote, morning, whatever. Uh, it doesn't look like morning, it looks the same as it ever has in hell. Um, yeah, long rest, take your long rest, mark off any rations you're eating. Uh, did everything in my bag get completely destroyed via the fire? Uh, it was dispelled, and I'll say it was put out by that magic. Our our rations, since we just uh, started new characters, what are we starting out with? Ten. Just the ten? Unless okay. Cool. Yeah. To wake up the group, um, I uh, play a, a kind of like a, a military tune on my whistle stick, which I'd like to think is a slide whistle. <whistles> yep. And I plug it like at the end of my trunk and I blow through my trunk while I slide whistle it up. It's nice. a ridiculous sound. Hit me cool. with a performance check. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's an 11, so a 10. Yeah, it's not very good. Add to the fact that it's a slide whistle type of thing. 
Uh, pretty annoying if any of your characters would get annoyed by something like that. I know I would. Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. what, are, you, what are you what are you doing? Up and out of boys. What? Time to go. Why why are you like this? <laughs> Just like <laughs> right in your face. <laughs> up, up, up. <laughs> and I and I shoo us all out of the cave. Horton, you're you're reminded of all those uh old dwarves you grew up with who talked about never grouping with non dwarves. You yep. will regret doing it and those old timers knew something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh great. So you got this wrecked flying fortress. How would you what would you like to do? Shit guys, should we sneak in and try well at least try not to alert the birds? Suggest the same. We should disguise ourselves as fiends. <laughs> <laughs> the foolproof plan. Brian, did your dad watch the TBK episode? No, but I did tell him about it, and that and that it was mostly my fault. <laughs> Why was it mostly your fault? I feel like it was everyone's fault except uh, Roz's. Well, it's true, but I I feel like I was the driving force behind the idea. <laughs> I threw out the idea the first time, and then I was a big advocate for it, despite <laughs> uh, Lola Tosa's, uh objections to the plan. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, uh, Jerry wanted it to be unanimous, um, but right. then he went along with it. Yeah, thanks, Jerry. Yeah, I don't take sole credit, but I do take some credit, certainly. As you should. Uh, uh, maybe the lion's share. No, and, I think it was just generally a group. Oh yeah, bad decision. totally. I mean, ultimately it was a group choice. Yeah, but here we are with new, newer, and maybe better characters. Uh, so you guys inside or climb the outside or fly or? Does it look like there's any entrances at ground level, like windows or anything that since it's like? Yes, there there are. It's it's a very weather beaten, just beat up. Uh, ship in general. Um, yeah, you I can't can find fly. an entrance. So I don't. Unless you guys like each of you is going to carry one of us. I don't think flying. I, I, um, I am going to uh, cast. Are we within a thousand feet of the wreck? Yes. I'm going to cast locate object on the adamantine bars. Okay. Nice. And. Uh, Locate object. It can find what magic shit and uh, anything. The direction of the object. <laughs> Very location. technical. Uh, if the object is in motion, you know the direction of the movement. See. We could last for an hour too. To switch one of my spells. Uh, the, the spell can't locate an object if any thickness of lead, even a thin sheet, blocks a direct path between you and the object. If that matters. Um, but other than that, I. I I'm curious if it's pinging up at the top of the ship, down below the ground, that sort of thing. I'm trying to get an yeah. idea of where in the ship the bars would be. Yeah, you. It's it's uh, not a clear signal, but it's towards the top of the ship. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, it looks like it's up there one way or another. I don't know what we're going to do about those vultures. Well, if we can get in and go up. I think we'll right. Okay. Should we stealth? Please. We can... Stealth climb? I, I, it's not something that I'm particularly known for. I'm a bit obvious. Yeah, yeah. me neither. I'm probably <laughs> the loudest person here, but I still think we should do our best. <laughs> Is that a challenge as I get ready to blow my trumpet? So no, we're no, climbing and trying to stealth. stealth. Yeah, you're Still. going on the inside, right? That's the point. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so you enter, and uh, the first thing you notice is that uh, it, structurally, with the stairs and ways to ascend, it doesn't look like it's going to be that difficult from just this bottom level. Um, the metal is rusted and beaten up, 
Uh, and if you're stealthing, everyone's stealth. Those of you with armor, that causes disadvantage. Roll with disadvantage. 13. 11. Not the worst. 18. No, that's good for a cleric. Brian? Well, I rolled a 19, which would have been a mod, a mod 20, and I rolled a 1. Mm. So, two. Mm. So, I got two? A, so I got a 2 with a nat 1. So a 2 and 11. What was yours, Gary? 13. 13. Shabby? 18. I'm not that curt. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, making your way from the bottom deck, uh, you make it to the next deck, and you see bo bones and skulls around. Detritus of various kinds. Um, you you hear the 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 stretching and stress of the metal uh, vividly from the inside. Um, you're not sure if something's moving within uh, something large, uh, but it doesn't seem to be the strongest noises doesn't don't seem to be uh, throughout the whole ship. Something seems to be moving. I smell. Is there any any? Make a perception check. Funky smell coming from the noises. Eighteen. Uh, you smell. Um, you smell something that you think may be living. There's a lot of trash and death smells, but. Um, you're not, you have no clue if that's the thing that's making the noises okay. throughout the ship. Uh, as you go higher in the ship, more bones. And, uh, at one point you hear just like the sound of, let's see if this sound will do it. I'm going to cast Mage Armor, which is so a source. Like slip, sliding and, and, and uh, slithering. I'm going to cast Mage Armor on myself, which is a first level sorcerer spell. Oh, roll it. Nope. Okay. Um, and this next section, what's the marching order? How tall are these ceilings? Front. I'll be behind him with my trunk holding his shoulder. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what was your question, Gary? How tall are these ceilings? My character would almost always be flying. Not if it's that possible. Tall. Okay. You might just be hovering. Okay, I'll hover. That's cool. That's cool. Are you you're using your bat wings? Yeah, it's just my it's part of my uh, yeah. race. And when I grab your shoulder with my trunk, I just whisper to you, like, this is the best way to march. This is how Oxidons do it. Sure, man. <laughs> just don't fucking puke on me again. I just don't. Yeah, you're not, you're not very high off the ground, maybe at most a few feet. I mainly don't want to make footsteps, so cool by me. Your bat wings make oh, plenty yeah. of noise. Touche, touche. Um, uh... Yeah, so the next deck, you see large slugs covered in bones. And right when you're getting to the top of the stairs, uh, they seem to sense you. And start coming towards you. I'm going to cast haste on two of my compadres. Uh... We're going to roll initiative first. Okay. gotta say 17 Drake mod up. mod 20 Horton 8 Jazzy 19 
You notice Balacros, uh goes invisible at the first hint of danger. You don't say. Balacros <laughs> is no Lulu. <laughs> she tried to help when yeah, she, she could. Did. She did. Did her best. The Balacros is way easier on the DM. He just vanishes. True. Very excited <laughs> when I read about Balacros. <laughs> <laughs> Although I will say the last like five episodes with Lulu, I was nailing. I didn't forget about her once. Yeah, I was, yeah it's true. As it only time took went like on, twenty five episodes better. for me to yeah. <laughs> uh, Draco, you're first. So I twin spell a haste on Shabby and Horton. Nice. And I get behind at the very back of my party. Um, just since it's a you have small to maintain room. Line of sight on that. Or just concentration? Just concentration. I don't think I ha- there's no distance component or anything. Okay. Sir Jazzy. Um, I am going oh, to... Oh, and that was a spell. Yes, roll it. One of these times I will roll in that one. Okay. Nothing. You didn't? No. Nope. Oh. Okay. Jazzy? Uh, Shabby, what, what's your weapon? Great axe, and then I also have a uh, lightning javelin. Sweet. I wrap my trunk briefly around your great axe, and then it uh, explodes in brilliant, radiant light as I cast Holy Weapon on it. Um, Sick. It is now emitting a bright light in 30 feet and dim light for another 30 feet, and any weapon attacks made with it deal an extra 2d8 radiant damage. Holy Avenger. And Damn. it's a weapon now, <laughs> if it wasn't already. Okay. So, so I'm going to do that. And that's my action. Um, so I won't do so I don't have a bonus action. That's all I'll do. Okay. And you see these bone whelks are on every surface of this level, upside down on the side, on the bottom. There's five of them. Uh, Shab. Shab Shabby the Bastard. And then when I do it, I tell you, no, go hit them. <laughs> so hold it. It was... Uh... He's wow. so buff right now. Darko? What's your name? Draco? Draco. Was Draco first? Darko Milicic, uh, Dave. <laughs> Donnie Darko? Jazzy. Trying to do better. Remembering the order. Okay, I go rage, and what's your rage look like? Recklessly, um, he just like all of a sudden like he just like looks like he just worked out and like all his veins are popping out. He's just like, yeah, his arms go out in front, shoulders forward, neck (sighs) neck goes into his body, yeah. (laughs) All right. Nice. Critical. <laughs> oh, God. I'm so sorry for how long this turn is going to take. Uh, A lot of dice. What you got now? <laughs> All right. So it's a 29. <laughs> <laughs> that does hit. Cool, cool, cool. You're fighting large snails. Roll the damage die again. Don't oh, forget your two d eight. Yeah, that are also doubled. Yeah, doubled. <sighs> and the the rage round. bonus. <laughs> way to way to make it like. <laughs> there's so much extra <laughs> shit. It's like a pain in the ass now. There's so many on damage dice on the on the first uh, on the first turn. I first swing. The, uh, yeah. Plus, sorry, I forgot to say I'm doing Great Weapon Master. I'm always doing that. Okay. Uh, reckless? Yeah, Reckless Great Weapon Master. So that is... <laughs> Only 32 because I didn't roll too well on the first D12s. Well, as you swing, you're swinging at one on the ceiling and you swing your Great Axe from behind you upwards, slicing the snail uh, vertically in half. 
and nice. killing it as it dies, it emits a death scream. No. <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna say like a death poison. No, but it's a death scream, so I guess oh, not as bad. bad. Uh, and you take. 11 necrotic damage from this scream. We all do, or just him? Anyone within 10 feet, so I'm going to say it's only Shab. But we hear it still? Yes. Cool. It's very unpleasant. It's not damaging, <laughs> though. Okay, so because I killed that thing, I get a bonus. Uh, you also have your hasted action. Yeah. And your regular <laughs> second. <laughs> Right, that's gonna miss so that's only a uh now's a good time to go to the bathroom <laughs> seriously <laughs> so that's that's a nine to miss i assume yes that does miss you're, you're so jacked up you're swinging wildly <laughs> recklessly even With okay. Ouch. Ooh. Bad. Oh, okay there we go so that's a 23 yes that does hit okay Forty-seven. No, uh, it's a uh, twenty-nine. And with this swing. You chop off the screeching snail's head, and uh, it emits another death screech, doing six points of necrotic damage to you. Oh, another critical. <laughs> the good thing it's on snails with an AC of 12. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is the time to bust out those holy mm -hmm. weapon grits. Ah, the damage sucks, though. Well Six plus eight plus. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna. I'm gonna kill it with my Grey Weapon Master ten bonus every time. So I don't even know if it's worth calculating. So, yeah, it's impossible for me not to kill it. Honestly, because ten. You don't plus... know how much hit points it has. You said twelve. No, no that's AC, AC of twelve. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say that to you, Brian, next time. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kill it. I kill it, Brian. What why are you <laughs> Why are you talking back to me? I twenty five. Uh damage. Okay. You slice this thing's antenna off half its face. It it is looking rough. Part of it's twenty five damage on a crit? 20 uh yeah Oof. it's still alive yeah i rolled a couple ones on damage anything die. else yeah. nope does okay. your killing things continuously give you more auto attacks or is it once a turn one per turn it's a good question i think it's just continuously no because i think it, it lets you do it as a bonus action yeah it's an extra it's an extra attack so it's a bonus action? An, an extra weapon attack. Oh, well, maybe it is. Maybe it's just an extra attack. I could be wrong. Because you raged so that you wouldn't have your bonus action. Um, Horton, you're next. You took your hasted action, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. That last one was my hasted. Okay. Yeah, I am going to uh, run up to if any of them are close to each other. That'd be preferable. How close do you need them? 30 feet of... Oh, yeah. Some of them are within... Yeah. I'm sorry. That's completely wrong. 15 feet of me. Yeah, two of them are. Okay. Then I'll run up there and cast Spirit Guardians. Okay. Roll your damage, uh, and I it's need to make save. a Wisdom save. Huh. What does your spiritual, spiritual Guardians look like? I imagine them looking like, uh, like Vikings. Like Nordic. It was 3D8. 
A 10 and a 16. Uh, the 16 just passes. And that's 18 radiant damage. Yep. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, I, I was adding the radiant damage. Never mind. Anything else? Uh, nope. You're hasted. Oh, no. Oh, I am hasted. I'll attack. I'll give it a good with, old thwack with my hammer. Okay. The one Jerry or Shab's hitting, or uh, sure. Which I, I had to run up to a cluster of them. So just, if that happened to be the one he's hitting, cool. I was aiming okay. for a pack. Yep. Sixteen plus six, twenty-two to hit. Yes, it does. So that's three non-magic damage, and then five lightning damage. Okay. Still alive. Uh, they've added a bloodied animation to this encounter tracker on D&D Beyond. Interesting. <laughs> All right. Well, that is it. Bone Wilkes. Okay, Jerry. You're getting a bite. And it's going to be a 10 to hit, Jerry. Nope. You're getting a bite, Horton. And it's going to be an 11 to hit, Horton. I'm sure that hits. Uh, What was that? An 11? No way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, the, Your the, guardians at the start of their turn. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was mm -hmm. double checking to make sure if it was at the start or their end. Two fails on the spirit guardians. But it's start. It's at the start. Thirteen radiant damage. One of them gets smashed by a Viking and lets out a death scream. And you're gonna take. 10 necrotic damage, Horton. Okay. And this guy's still alive. And the same thing holds true. Uh, both of them miss. Back to the top of Draco. Gonna cast Chill Touch as a skeletal hand goes towards the. You said there's one left, right? There's two left. Two How left. far can it reach? It can reach 120 feet. Cool. <laughs> What's the uh, one that's taking the most damage? Uh, whichever one that one is. Okay. Is it a save? It is a. Uh, attack. Uh, uh, it's attack roll. Okay. Go ahead and attack. I passed my con save from that hit. Nice. From my spirit guardian. 23. Yes, that does hit. 12 uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, I think it's necrotic yeah 12 necrotic damage uh, this thing turns into a husk of its former self and crumples to the ground no loud noises this time I like it killed it uh, no it does release a noise uh and jerry's next to it takes four <laughs> necrotic i mean shabby sorry shabby <laughs> should have kept my mouth shut how much four four necrotic and jazzy there's one left i'm gonna toll the dead at wisdom save told the dead that's a two so that's a fail uh, my my bell sounds like an elephant. <laughs> I'll make that work in my imagination. <laughs> I don't, it's, my bell sounds like an elephant. Yeah, that's right. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty points of necrotic damage. Yeah, it's a effective bell, and this this bone whelk uh, shudders from the noise and falls dead, letting out a scream. 
giving six damage to Horton Necrotic, and we're out of initiative. I keep my spirit guardians up because they're ten minutes. I keep holy weapon up as well. That's an hour. Okay. The uh, you've... axe is just a beacon of wonder, Shabby. It looks awesome. Haste is going to wear off in a minute. You guys are going to get real tired. Sorry, guys. Just drop it now. I drop it out of the way. I'll drop and it. And your, your Toll the Dead, the bell, the elephant bell, uh, after it kind of goes away, um, you hear more of that movement within the bowels of the ship. You see various pipes in the ship going through it some of them large some of them smaller uh the largest is uh five feet radius and um it's very disconcerting gentlemen i feel like something's coming up from the depths i suggest we press forward quickly let's go let's and go <laughs> um let's go yep I'll go as fast as I can. Little legs. Would you like me to carry you? No. <laughs> All right. No dwarf likes to be carried. Take note. Uh, but sometimes dwarfs must. No. <laughs> as you uh, get towards what you think is the top of the ship, um, you come out on a... Uh, it doesn't look anything like a command deck quite yet. You don't see the types of things you might expect on a command deck of a warship. Um, but you see a large, empty room, and uh, you see an opening in this five-foot uh, radius pipe that's going throughout the ship. And been hearing the same noise i described earlier and on this level uh you hear the noise coming up through the pipe and much more since there's an opening in this portion of the pipe it's much more pronounced and you see little legs little antennae come out of this hole and uh coming out of it is a 30 foot long Centipede. No. Centipede looking oh. thing. <laughs> oh, I like it. And it's coming right for you, so roll initiative. Oh, hell. How much time has passed oh, that. since our last combat? Uh, More than 10 minutes. Oops. Not more than an hour. Awesome. 21. 16 for me. 21. Seven. 21, 21, 21. Seven for Horton. Yes. All right. As the centipede moves closer to you guys, you see some... some nasty looking sludge coming off of it some would call it necrotic sludge i am one of those people draco i'm going to cast uh yeah why not i'm gonna cast immolation on it nice and that's gonna be a deck save Immolation. Eight. Beautiful. Uh, 8d6 fire damage. And... <laughs> what does immolation look like? Is it a Is it a tower of fire, or is it a... Before I forget, uh, 31 damage. Um, and so immolation is flames uh, wreath. One creature you can see within range. Uh, basically, it's just burning for the duration of the spell. 
Uh, it's, okay. it, it's a bright light, 30 feet radius. Um, and at the end of each turn, it gets to repeat the saving throw. Uh, you light this thing up. Uh, it's making like a clicking noise as it moves, like a... And you light it up, and the clicking doesn't change as it's being burned. Uh, but it doesn't seem to be aff affected by it at all. Ouch. Come here. It sucks when you burn a fifth level spell slot. <laughs> cool. Oh, roll your uh, bullshit uh, wild oh. magic. Yep. <laughs> roll your bullshit. No. Nope. Please get a one. Nope. One of these days. How boring. Right. How boring is that it doesn't take fire damage? <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is true. You just got to use your Tides of Chaos so they can just make you do wild magic, whatever you want. Yeah, well, I didn't have anything to get advantage on, so. No. Yet. Okay, so. Yeah. That's your turn, right? Shab mm -hmm. Shabby. Shab Shabberific. So that uh, great axe is still shining, holy. shining it's bright. Still holy. Oh, I also would have bright like a diamond. I also would have moved away from it. Sorry. How close did you have to get? I well, I wasn't in front of it. I just don't want to be in front. I don't want to be near yeah, it right now. Okay. I would have. Yeah. I would have backed up. Attacking recklessly, great weapon master, raging with the bonus. Ooh. And that's a 21. Yes. As you hit it. Yes. Oh, uh, ooh, nice. Finally got a 12 on the... That is 36. 36. First you also take seven fire damage as you cut into it its heated interior lashes out at you scalding your worn half orc you said body. six seven well that same. backfired same same difference to me <laughs> uh so i'm assuming i miss with a 14 on the second swing you do miss how do you miss a centipede just like walks around like there's like pfft, and just like pfft, it's like going around my great axe. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you get distracted by its many legs. It's very <laughs> mesmerizing to see them move in a wave. Uh, centipedes are creepier than cockroaches to me. I think spiders yeah. creep me out. Oh, oh spiders yeah. don't creep me out at all. It's center centipedes way more. I turn into a blithering you and me, Jake. You and me. Blithering, <laughs> weakling. But what do you human. do when you see a centipede? Kill it. I, I, I described being mesmerized because I get mesmerized by their legs moving in a wave. It's, I mean... They're crazy. But they're gross. Anyway. Yeah, they are gross. Uh, Sir Jazzy. Um, I'm going to... Uh, you see me do something similar before. I, I use my gauntlets to, like summon up an orb of like black energy streaked with white and I stuff it in my trunk and then blast it right behind Horton's head. It's really loud, but I do cast death ward on you. So you got that going for you. Thanks. Um, <laughs> he <doesn't> even, <laughs> even good shit is annoying. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were right in front of me, you know, the trunk was right there. Um, and then I'm going to, and then I'm done. That's an action. <laughs> Horton. Uh, we're just going to pop the handy dandy spirit guardians again and run at this boy. How close are you getting? Uh, max range of my spirit guardians, so 30 okay. or 15 feet. That is a 17 wisdom save. That passes, so it takes half of 15 so seven damage it takes radiant nice that's it for me and i kind of like taunt it i like try to get its attention i like bang my shield a little bit with my hammer if i can 
Mm-hmm. Make some grunting yeah. dwarf noises. All right. The necrotic Remoraz is going to take you up on that offer and get close to you. It needs to make another save. Yes. That's a 12. Fail. 10 radiant damage. And it's got half move speed while it's in there. Mm -hmm. So that matters at all. It's going to bite you. With its mandibles. 26. That does hit. There's my... Superheated mouth. Quick question on Ben Luck. Um, I know it's too late to do it for this time. Uh, I can roll a d4, and I can do it after the roll to go before and... Before I say it, right. Before you say what the damp... It says before any effects occur. Do I get to know how close he was to hitting it at all, or is it complete? Like, do I know if he missed by a couple, or... No, you don't. Okay, it's... so it's... Yeah. Okay. Uh... Take 39 piercing damage from its mandibles. Okay. Plus. Seven fire damage. And you're grappled. So that's a total of what, like 46? Half of that is 23. I have to roll a nat 20 to... (laughs) To half it or what? No, for my concentration. Oh right. Your right. guardians failed. Okay. That goes down your strained. Ouch. And you're in its the grasp of its heated mouth. How big is this thing? It is that is a great question. It's huge. So like 30, two, two levels, two what? sizes bigger than us or whatever. Yeah. Was the pipe as big as it or did it get bigger as it got out of the pipe? It was a tight squeeze. Hmm. Cool. But bugs can do that. So obviously, do I realize that it's not doing any damage to him? Because I assume it didn't do any, it didn't have to roll a deck save and it didn't do anything on its turn. Right. What are you are you talking about for your damage didn't do anything? You knew it didn't do, you don't think yeah. it did anything. So but but the second time around when it had its turn, did it have did it do anything the second time around if it would have failed? It was supposed to make a a immolation save or something. It, yeah, it would have done another deck save while I'm concentrating. Uh, oh, okay. at the end, I want to say it's at the end of its at the end of each of its turn, it repeats the saving throw. Yeah, it it lights up and Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Cool, and I realize that. So I'm going to drop the concentration on that. Yep. And then I'm going to uh, switch back to my usual, and I'm going to twin spell again. A uh, Another haste. Yep. Okay. On my two forward fronters that are up close. Cool. Because, uh, sure, Jazzy, you usually stay back with me, right? You usually do ranged. Okay. I... I, I... Yeah, I cast cool. spells. So, yeah, so Shabby not, and Horton not are... Not like you are, but I cast spells. Yeah, so Shabby and uh, Horton are hasted again. Okay, anything else? Snope. Go ahead and make your 20 roll. Yep. Nope. Okay, Shab. You're muted. Oh, you got 21 it. 21 for the first swing. That does hit. So I'm, oh, okay. Never mind. Uh, nice. Hell yeah. Thirty-eight. Nice. You Second take swing. Twelve fire damage as the insides of it uh, burn you. Just 
getting it good like right below the the head of the beast just like having to like pull my axe out of it again to take another swing the 18 to hit that does hit ooh sweet nice Not so nice. 32. You take another 12 fire damage. Um, so for my bonus action, I'm just going to like punch it. <laughs> I don't think you can. Oh, because I'm two-handing. Yeah. I'm going to kick it. Yeah. You, you do your darndest. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm trying to be better about using my bonus action. Yeah, it's tough with the. Uh, I think it does tell you that if you're two-handing it in the. Uh, yeah, you can't. Um, it's fine. Plenty of people action. don't use their bonus action. Uh, so I think it's still a strength check for me. To do what? To take a take a kick. I mean, do you have an attack as a bonus action? Yeah. That are you? Do you? Um. Just says no. Just says only if only if I'm dual wielding, I guess. Oh yeah. Never mind. I thought uh, I thought I could do. I don't know. Um, we were talking in the Discord about doing other stuff for my. For my, um, I think I'm misinterpreting stuff that I read in the Discord. So, okay. Yeah, I don't do anything. You were talking to these guys. Yeah, I think I think Brian was telling me to do stuff with my attacks, not my bonus actions. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. You can swap out an attack yeah. action, like when when you have yeah. two attacks, you can use one of them to grapple and still attack with the other one or something like that. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was for your full action, not a bonus, unfortunately. Jazzy. I would like to run up um, as I summon up a spiritual weapon at fourth level. Um, cool. A big old spiky gauntlet now. Um, as I am jabbing it in its face with that, I'm going to wrap my trunk around Horton and try to rip him out of the dude's mouth. Okay, so you're using the spiritual weapon bonus action to hit it. Bonus action. action. Grab and, yeah, make I, I know check. why I'm confused now because I I was uh, I forgot to use the haste action. But uh, there you go. That's cool. Just keep going. Okay. Okay. Um, so he needs. I need to do an attack for the weapon. Twenty four. Yes. And at fourth level. It does 2d8. Sixteen points of whatever damage. Force damage. Yep. Um, and then athletics to free him. Uh just make a strength check. Not athletics. I mean, I don't feel like it's athletic. Like you're. I thought it was usually a contesting athletics checks. To oh wait, no, it's a grapple. It's an escape DC, isn't it? Yeah, and I'm just. You're... Oh, oh, you're yeah. Whatever you'd like. Strength check it is. Twenty one. Yeah, you're you're able to free Horton, and he drops in front of the Ramiraz, and he will. He's no longer restrained. So we... anything else? No, that will be everything. Okay, Horton, you're now free. I'm really upset. It's the elephant that freed me. I it's... thought you would be. Yeah. <laughs> this fucking guy. Looks pretty cool. He summons the spiritual weapon and it punches the f shit out of this thing and then he saves you. Yeah. 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 He also puked I on me. I something encouraging too. Hicking me up. I got you, buddy. <laughs> Are you still covered in puke since, you know, we haven't bathed anywhere? Yeah. Sorry. Nobody has prestidigitation. Nope. Nope. 
Uh, I am going to cast. Uh, that hurt a lot. So I'm going to, like, look at this thing. It's right in front of me, right? Oh, yeah. You're right in front of its large face. So I'm just going to, like, look at it and just, like, strike the ground with my hammer as hard as I can. And cast huh. a destructive wave at it. Cool. Uh, each creature you choose within 30 minutes. You know, I need a con save. Well, it's pretty good at that. It's not that good right now. That's only a 10. That's a fail. So that's nine thunder. And then... Nineteen radiant. Boom. Still alive. Uh, a creature that wait. Thunder. And uh, if it fails, it's knocked prone. So it, like blasts the legs out from under him. He, like mm -hmm. does yeah. the splits. And it lands on its belly. Yeah. It's it's long belly. Uh, kind of in a in a uh, in a uh, worm. Literally a worm. Uh, <laughs> anything else? Uh, no. Not any bonus actions I can do. That's it for me. Remember oh, wait, as I'm hasted? hasted. Am I hasted? You are. Yeah. I smack it in the face. Okay, smack it in the face. Uh, does a fourteen hit? No, it doesn't. Don't smack it in the face. It's gonna bite you. Can you cast a spell with haste if you cast a spell on your full action? I don't see why not. I don't know. That sure. sounds like a sage advice thing. Might even say in haste. I just didn't want to. It probably, likely, it's just like with most things in sage advice, it's usually in the... <laughs> um, 22 to hit you, Horton. Does not hit because I'm hasted. Holy shit. <laughs> yes! That is incredible. Yes! <laughs> What's the ruling there? Well, he it's not his AC. <laughs> 22 so does get, not hit him. What's your you AC? Bonus, What's your you AC now, Ross? What's your AC when you're hasted? Yeah, you get yeah, a plus you two. Yeah. Uh, I did not know that. Every time I get upset about something like that, I have to think of my fucking blade dancer... Uh, Blade Singer. Uh, yeah. Anyways, I can't really. Do yeah, it. my AC is twenty three right now. Nice. <laughs> Draco. Chaos Bolt. It's very bloodied. With advantage, I'm using my Tides of Chaos. Nice. Oh my God! Really, a four and a five. That's not good. 13. All right. And, and then... Your wild magic, right? Yep. Which will reset my Tides of Chaos. Um, I'm just rolling. I'm, I have a surge, uh, a, 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 a roller website that does a 10... Uh, it rolls on a 10,000, D10,000 table for your wild magic. Nice. And you got 9,934. Wow. That's a good one. What's up there? <laughs> uh, the scent of rotten eggs. Wait, why are you? I thought, it, why are you rolling it? Because the chaos lets him auto choose when he does it. Oh, I thought I have to do. Oh, I thought I had to roll another one. Oh, that's even cooler. Yeah. You, DM can have you roll on the wild man. Ooh. <laughs> got it. Why are you... I got excited. I didn't realize that. <laughs> uh, Continue. Anyways, this, the scent of rotten eggs permeates everything within 50 yards. Gross. So you got that. So just like the rest of hell? Yes, it is very... It's just like... You, maybe like a breeze came through the, uh, the warship. 
Nice. Oh man, <laughs> I totally know. did not realize I could do that. Oh, I'm more but excited. You know, wild magic has occurred. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's you, but the rest of us just assume it's a breeze that blew through. Yep. It's like you farted <laughs> and exactly yeah. It. yeah. All right, anything else, Draco? Nope. Shabby. Shabby continues to swing away. Uh, does a 17 hit? Yes, it does. Just hits. All right, I pre-rolled all this. He does 40 damage. Holy shit. Right. There it is. Uh, That's with a 7 and an 8 on the two extra D8s. You take 13 fire damage as you kill this thing. How do you kill it? Um... <laughs> Just cut off its head. Fair enough. Whatever the closest thing to a head it's got. It's got something like Smack that. Smack it right off. And it's dead. Perfect. Good timing. Only four minutes after. Right? Not bad. We're out of initiative. The, the necrotic Remoraz is dead. Sick. Nice job. And I get an extra attack now. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you have advantage? <laughs> I'm only partially kidding. <laughs> Hack this thing to pieces. If you want. Uh, we'll, we'll end on you hacking it to pieces. Uh, thanks so much for watching. We're, we're getting our, our way towards the end of this adventure. And uh, hopefully it'll be with this crew. <laughs> <laughs> Unlikely. <laughs> you guys I, you guys are so negative now just because there's been so many deaths in a short period of time just you because there's been so many deaths destructible. we have AC 23 over here yeah <laughs> two clerics you guys made it, doing ridiculous damage you made it through the first third I of mean, the adventure without any deaths there's I mean, also I very why you're worried about the thing happening that's been happening a lot lately that's what I'm saying basically <laughs> Yeah, until I roll Magic Weld and I do something that kills all of us. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, Death Maybe. Ward, Relentless Endurance. We have enough people that would pop back. It's fine. Uh, I also have Death Ward. Relentless Endurance is not as great as it sounds because usually if you're going down, you're going to get. Hit you're just going to get knocked down if you're but that going means against someone who's multi attacking. We are taking. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. It's wonderful ability. But I'm just saying, when you're going against a big enemy that's multi-attacking, usually you go down, and then whatever their like secondary attack is just kills oh, yeah. you. You okay. just hope it's the second attack that would have knocked you out. Yeah, and then you're yeah. good. Yeah. Does the just, if that brings a... you back up? Does the house rule of exhaustion double no. whammy you? No. Okay. I'll say no. Um, I just found a, a good wild magic surge. That throws you 46 hours into the future. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be an interesting twist. Uh, yeah, I won't tell you what number it is. Not that it matters. Anyways, uh, if you guys have anything to plug, do you guys have anything to plug? Oh. Okay. I do. Fridays, I play a Star Wars RPG with Fate Accelerated. Turk Bango. Turk Bango. Turk Bango, sorry. The Smuggler and, uh, yeah, Chiss Gunslinger. <coughs> um, it's a good time. We hang out on twitch.tv slash roll for change. Try to raise money for the ACLU because that's a good cause. And, uh, yeah, we have a lot of fun. So you can find me there Fridays at... 3 p.m. Pacific, that's the time. Uh, other than that, be excellent to others, be excellent to yourself, and wear your freaking mask. Uh, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>